Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we're going to break down with you guys of Manchester United, this club, and what has gone wrong with this club. So today, we're going to be breaking this down. I need you guys' help in the comments below to also let me know any additional points I missed in this video. That would be greatly appreciated. And of course, remember, guys, to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, man. You know, you should always get in the habit of liking and subscribing, man. It really does help the channel grow, and it greatly it is greatly appreciated, man. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the first segment we have here is the defense. Manchester United's defense this season has been awful. It's been extremely bad. Now, we have to make things clear here. Manchester United are not playing their best 11 defensively. Luke Shaw has been injured. Veron has been injured. Lozano Martinez is injured. Aaron Wampasak is injured. All of their defenders, their main defenders, have been injured. And you've had to resort to players like Maguire... Evans, Delote, and Regulon. Now, to be fair, Regulon's been decent, so I'm not going to be too harsh upon him. We obviously know Maguire and Evans is bad. We obviously know Evans is really bad. And guys, Delote is average at best. Because Aaron Wampasaka is a very good right back. The guy is defensively rock solid. Delote is a mediocre right back. He is average at best. Okay? So, my thing with United is that, okay, the defense is obviously going to be bad because, you know, your main defenders are even there. So, I'm not going to be too harsh to defense. I don't think there's a lot to be said there. And obviously, Onana is not really helping himself. Although, I think Onana has improved. I don't think he's been bad as he used to be. Uh, but like I said, though, it's still early signs. And we'll see if he can sustain this form throughout the rest of the season. Now, we move on to the midfield. Where there is a lot of issues with the midfield. A lot of issues in the midfield. Let's start with the first and obvious one, Mason. I said it this summer, and I will say this again. Mason Mount, for me, was not a signing United needed to make. United didn't need to make that signing. And the only reason that I think they made this signing was because of PR. The English PR. And guys, English players are overpriced. We all know this. English players are overpriced, and most of them are not even that great English players. Like, let's be real. Most English players are not that amazing. There are, of course, a few exceptions, which I know you guys will tell me in the comments below. Drew Bellingham, Declan Rice. You know, I would agree with you. But generally speaking, most English players are not worth the price and, you know, are not as good as people make them out to be. My thing with Mason Mount is that he himself isn't a bad player. I'm going to be real. He is a good player, but he isn't a player that United needs to make a sign. And United spent $60 million on him as a backup player. Really? Really? 60 million for a player that's going to be a backup. That is ridiculous. And my problem with Mason Mount is also another question. What is his best position? Is his, because for me, his best position for me is the camp. And that's already been fulfilled by Bruno Fernandes. So why in the earth do you still sign um, Mason Mount when you already have Bruno? It would make sense if you didn't have Bruno. But you do have him. Right? So, it just doesn't make sense. I don't know why Mason Mount was brought in. Okay? Like I said, he isn't a bad player. I don't want to say he is. I just don't think United needed to sign him. $60 million, Okay? And I think what Tenok's trying to do is trying to convert him into a box-to-box -box player, a midfielder. And my issue is that you might as well have just bought a box-to-box -box player from the beginning. You could have got Kochu this summer. I believe Kochu left a final on a free this summer to Benfica. That would have been an amazing player. That guy is a really good player. And he's a very fantastic player that can move the ball up and forward. He's a very good player. And I think he would have been way better than Mason Mount. Okay? You know? And then we get to Casemiro, man. Casemiro. Guys, you could see why Real Madrid sold him. Because the guy... Sure, he was great last season. Last season, he was amazing. This season, he has not been amazing. He's been... Pretty mediocre, you know? And there's a reason why that Real Madrid side is sold in. Because Real Madrid knows when to sell their players at the right time, at the right place. And while people may have said, oh, Real Madrid might have regretted it, I don't think they regret it now. Casemiro has not been that great this season. He's not. And we have to have this real conversation on Casemiro. Casemiro is a good player. I'm not saying he's a good, bad player, obviously. He's a good player. His longevity, he, like, the thing is, like, he isn't that great anymore. He's kind of slow. He's not making those tackles that he needs to make. And you can see how he's been injury-prone this season as well. 
you know, he's going to miss several games as well. And you can see how age is finally catching up to him and where, yeah, United do need to sell him. I would say give him until the end of the summer and United need to cash in the summer because for me, I don't think Casemiro can make it next season. This should be his last season at United, in my personal opinion. And like I said, I respect Casemiro. Casemiro is a very good player for Real Madrid and I think he's one of the most underappreciated players. But as I said, though, the guy is, you know, he's not as good as he used to be. Then we have Scott McTominay, who, in my opinion, is an average mediocre player at best. And while he may bring you goal scoring here and there, the guy isn't a good midfielder. He can't even pass the ball. Okay? He cannot even make the basic passes that are necessary to be a midfielder. And I can guarantee you right now, guys, if McTominay wasn't a United Academy player, he probably would have been sold. He probably would have been. Because criticize Fred all you will. Fred performed for Manchester United in those big games. He always, he was great in those big games. He performed against Manchester City. He performed against Barcelona. He came up crucial in those games. I'm sorry. When you compare Fred and McTominay, Fred is way clear. United should have sold McTominay last summer and kept Fred. That's what they should have done. Instead, they did the opposite, and you're seeing how McTominay just isn't good enough. And remember that win that United had over Brentford, and while it was a great win, we won the game. It was paper wins the cracks. Because you know what? You know why I say that? Because McTominay started the next two games and almost cost the team in both games. Gave away two penalties. One penalty got saved. One penalty got converted. And United still managed to win both games. And these were games against like Sheffield United and Copenhagen. In which you should be beating these teams anyway. You shouldn't have to rely on a penalty save or, you know, penalty being com- penalty saved to win those games, you know? That is kind of sad, you know? So then you have the midfield issues. Then you also have Amrabat. Amrabat, for me, is a good player. I think he is a good player. But I don't think he's as raw class as people make him out to be. Because the thing is, like, I think that I agree with this. I heard someone say this on someone's channel. I fully agree. Amrabat is good when the team is playing good. When the team is playing bad, Amrabat is not that great. And that is my issue with Amrabat is that he is a good player. But I don't think he's, like, an especial and incredibly amazing player. You know? And I think, you know, he's a good squad player for United, I would say. But I don't think he's good enough as a starter. I just don't think he's good enough to be a starter. You know, my personal opinion. So, you have Christian Eriksen, who isn't for me a... He's a decent player. He's a good going forward. He doesn't have the defensive capabilities. He just doesn't. And that's my issue with Eriksen is that he just can't start, man. You need to have that defensive play... You need to have the defensive presence in the team. You know, and obviously Mino has been injured. And maybe Mino could have helped things out. But the guy, the thing is, like, we don't know, man. The guy is like a young prospect. So we don't know how he would have been for this season. Obviously, he would have been good, I would imagine. But I don't know how good he would have been. So for me, United's midfield is such a mess. And people don't think about this. The reason why teams win football games is down to the midfield. The midfield is so important. It makes those groundbreaking passes, it makes those defensive passes that are necessary. Without a proper midfield, your team can have the best forwards in the world, the best defense in the world, the best goalkeeper in the world. I can guarantee you, if you give them the worst midfield in the world, they're not going to do much. They're not going to win those trophies because the midfield is so, so important. The midfield is the reason why teams win or lose games. You need to have that good pos- You need to have that good control of the game to make sure you can have those passes, to make sure the forwards can actually score goals, to make sure the ball doesn't get, you know, you know the defense doesn't have to do everything. So, it's very, very important in the midfield. And I think the midfield is one of the most crucial aspects of the game. Okay? Now we get into attack. And where I have a lot to say upon that attack. Uh, guys, we have to talk about this guy. Marcus Rashford, for me, is a player that... He's in his prime. And I feel like, for me, the guy is still the same player. As he was several years ago. And for me, that is embarrassing. Because this is a player that he's supposedly United's academy player. He's supposedly United. He should be United's best player. At least on paper. Right? He has a number 10 jersey. And yet, he doesn't do it. And while he can have those good forms here and there, he is not consistent enough. And if I'm being honest with you, United have to either bench him or sell him. Because the thing is, like, as a football brand. See, it's one thing for United is this. Is that 
what do you want to do? Do you want to be a football club or a football brand? Because if you want to be a football club, you have to bench Rashford or sell him because the guy isn't good enough. I'm sorry. He isn't good enough to be a starter for this club. You know? And the thing is, as a brand, it's going to hurt the brand so much. They're going to lose a lot of money if they sell Rashford. He is one of those important players that can bring them so much off the pitch. He can bring you so much money. There's a, That's why he's probably not going to leave United anytime soon because of his PR and his brand. He is such an integral player for that reason. So, for United, as I said, man, you have to act serious. And for me, the more you keep, t- the more you expect Rashford to be a starter, the more he's not going to be that great. You know? Then you have Bruno Fernandes. Who, for me, I'm going to say a very controversial opinion. Some people may get mad at me in the comments below. I'm going to be aware. And feel free to dislike this video if you don't agree. I, I, I quite frankly don't care if you don't agree with this opinion. It's my opinion, and I'm not going to change my opinion. Bruno Fernandes shouldn't be your captain. He shouldn't be the captain. Because the captain of the team can't complain every single time when the going gets tough. I'm sorry. That shows you have weak mentality. You cannot handle the physicality of the opponent. You're going to really complain to every every single time? That is pathetic. And I know people are going to tell me in the comments below that, oh, he's just showing he cares about the club and that kind of stuff. But you, there's another way you can do it. You could yell at the players. You could say, come on, players, let's do this. He could be like Sergio Ramos. Be that kind of be that kind of person that could yell at the players. You know, instruct them to do it. Because at the end of the day, as a captain, you should be a role model for the team. Someone to the players can look up to. Okay? Are you really telling me you want the future United players and the future to have that kind of idea that, hey, complaining to referees okay all the time? It isn't. You know? And I think for Bruno Fernandes, he needs to stop doing that. Because it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, man. For a player of his caliber, he shouldn't be doing this. In my opinion, guys, I don't think Bruno Fernandes is that amazing a player. He's a good player, but he's not like a world-class player. You know? And for me, his he's not been that great this season. You know? You know, and that's the thing is that, yes, he can show up against a Burnley and Luton Town, those kind of teams. But those kind of crucial games against, like, Newcastle United, against Arsenal, those are the games that really matter. You know? And for me, I just don't think he's, he most of the time, doesn't show up in those games, in my opinion. He just doesn't. So then you have Rasmus Hoyland, who, for me, has been a good player for United. He just doesn't have the service, man. He just doesn't have the service, you know? And you can see, when you give him the ball... When you give him the service, the guy is good. We've seen in the Champions League. Okay? Then we have Anthony Martial, who, in my opinion, is finished. I'm sorry. Anthony Martial should be sold. The guy is absolutely finished. I don't know why he's still at the club. He's so injury-prone. The guy is just not good enough. I'm sorry. United have to sell him. Then you have Anthony, who, in my opinion, is an overrated player. I don't think he's that great. He's a decent player. Once again, way overpriced. I think you have Sancho. The less said, the better, because that is controversial in itself. And it's been a mess to see what happened to him. And I feel bad, because I think he was really talented coming into United. And he's not performed well. Now, we talk about Ten Hag. Eric Ten Hag. So, here's the thing with Ten Hag. For those saying that, oh, sack Eric Ten Hag. Everything will be fixed. That is the most stupidest thing I've heard in my life. Because sacking Ten Hag doesn't change anything. Because what's going to happen is that you're going to bring in a new coach. Everything goes well the first season. And then second and third season, everything goes to crap. That's always been like that with United. Every single time they bring in a new manager, it goes well the first season. And then the second season, it gets progressively worse. From the second season on, it gets progressively worse. And I just think that for Manchester United in particular, they have to be serious here right now. Sacking Ten Hag doesn't really change anything. Because, like I said, the root issue of this club isn't really Ten Hag. Although I do think Ten Hag can improve upon his tactics. I do think he needs to be playing more a counter-attacking style, not possession-based. Because, for me, what made United what, what United has been known for is counter-attacking football. And for Ten Hag, he has to be a manager that needs to have a certain style at display. Because you cannot, do a res- you cannot try to just get the results. Because get the results is not sustainable. It's not. You can't just get the results all the time. It's not going to be sustainable. We've seen what happened to Antonio Conte. It, it went downhill quickly. you know. And while it may work here and there for a few months, it's not going to work for the entire season. And for the thing for Ten Hag is that he was brought in to give United to make a process. 
He was brought in to establish a legacy, a long-term coach. He was intended to be a long-term coach, not a short-term coach. And for me, getting results through is like a short-term mindset. It's not a long-term thing, you know, and I just think that's important. But I want to get back to the Glazers here. The Glazers are the root issue of this club because the Glazers just don't care about the football. They care about the money, okay? And right now, they could care less about what happens to United. They just want the money. And you bring them any manager you want, even Pep Guardiola, even Jurgen Klopp. They're going to fail here because they're not going to get the backing that they need. Okay? They're not going to get the backing that they need at the club. And the Glazers will continue to underperform. And so that's why I think that even if you bring in a new coach, it won't be matter because the Glazers will not back the coach, supposedly. And so this is why I think with Ten Hag. I say you give him until the end of the season. Let's see what Ten Hag can do with all his available players back. Because once they have an entire full squad players, I think United will be better. Because I think most of the issues right now are down to the injuries. And I think certain players have to improve as well. Rashford and Bruno Fernandes, for instance. You know? So I hope you guys did enjoy this comprehensive review of United. I I think I, would, I did some rambling there, here and there. I hope you guys did enjoy. And I want to know what you guys think in the comments below, guys. You know, tell me if I'm wrong here. Tell me if you disagree with me. You know, I'm really keen to hear, guys. This is going to be a good discussion. And like I said, guys, if you made this far, please consider that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. Also, comment down below your thoughts, comment down below. And yeah, make sure you guys check out me in the description below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.